Hi, Hi Terry. Hi. How are you? It's great to be back. It's so good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> Thank We're you. Going into the holiday I, season now. I know. And, con- and Facebook is saying, congrats, this is your 10th broadcast. Oh. So congratulations. I'm excited. And we already have a few people watching live. So hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Here we go. All right. What are we talking about today? Uh, We're talking about reasons you might not book the job. You come to the callback. In fact, I'm going to give you five reasons why you might not book the job. Okay. Um, You did a really great job. You came to the callback and now... And you leave the call back and you did a great job. There is nothing that you did wrong. <laughs> so uh, then the selection process starts. And um, first of all, so they, they might have like maybe seven people that they're considering and they go through each person. They look at your photograph and they many times, they remember your performance or they have the session director pull up your performance on the computer in this studio <laughs> and um, they review and um, they consider your look. And if there's six or seven people, mm, the looks have to vary. So definitely there is a look. And as they start, shuffling you around and putting the group together, your look might not um, cut it (laughs) as well as someone else's. So there's definitely your look. Um, Then there's your feel and the essence to who you are. And um, if you notice, all these things you can't change. (laughs) You've given a great audition, but these are the things in the final callback. Um, By the way, my next blog coming out um, in um, LA Casting, or for those of you around the country, Casting Networks, um, The Networker, is about this, and I even include um, photographs in the audition room of the Created, and you'll see, you'll see like all the photographs laid out on the floor. And so be sure to catch it. Wow. So or so- I'll also have it posted up on my website, um, workshops.berlincasting.com. Awesome. Yeah, there's a blog section there. It's not up yet though. Okay, when will that be up? Um, it's going to be up, you know, probably around December 5th. Okay, well, we'll remind everyone as well. Okay, um, so there's your feel. And you might feel too upscale, not upscale enough. You might feel too energetic. You might not feel energetic enough. Um, you might feel... I've had actually the experience where someone didn't feel trustworthy enough. (laughs) Um, And then of course there's relationship. So when you're with other people, um, we shuffle you around sometimes, you know, put you in groups and the feel of the relationship changes. And um, it's chemistry. So that's really interesting, and that might not work in the end as well as someone else. It's it's very very subjective. Yeah. Um, give a good performance, and everything else is subjective. Yeah. Um. Then well, of course, I was just going to say on the chemistry bit. Um, so let's say they've got different people in the scene, and they're yeah. trying to match the chemistry of numerous people. Mm. So will they have like the a, a person that they're going to concentrate on more and then like the lead, for example, and then they'll be matching the chemistry to that one person? Well, or it's is- interesting because they don't match the chemistry. Right. They The chemistry happens. <laughs> yeah. And they do have a favorite usually. So... Um, if in one of the characters 
they pick their favorite, then yes, just as you suggested, they'll match other people to see the chemistry. Okay, got it. Um, and, oh, they go as far as, well, because there's first choices and then there's second and third choices, and they go as far as, well, if the client doesn't pick our first choice of this character and they choose the second choice, then look at what happens to the chemistry, the look, and the feel of the whole spot if that person is changed. So they go over all these scenarios mm -hmm. and try to figure out, you know, all the different options because it's not up to them, ultimately. They, it's up to the final client, ultimately. Okay. And then, of course, it's, um, oh, direction could change at the last minute. You get called back, you give a great audition, and you have no idea that the direction changed. So it's important for you to know all this because the main thing you have to concentrate on is being a good actor and you can't get home and be thrown when you get released from your audition which brings me to um, the fifth reason that you might get released or not get booked it's luck of the draw <laughs> it really is someone else just for all those other elements just got it that day instead of you because of all those reasons. And so there, there, is, there is luck involved. And I know it doesn't feel very good when you get released, right? Yeah. Didn't you just get released from it's, something? It's a difficult one because you, you kind of, as an actor, sometimes bank on it and then you realize, oh, you know, I was consistent. I was authentic to who I was. So that's all I can do. Exactly. Right? I know. And I know it doesn't feel good, but um, it was, we're happy that we had so many choices. The producers, the director is happy. They got so many choices and only one person can get it. So, so you know how you said, so it was really the client that makes that final decision. Yes. So they've, they're taking all the pieces of the puzzle and they've gone through your five, like the list of the five, you know, energy, the relationship and all those things. And then ultimately, even if there's the director saying something else and the writer saying something else, the client is the one that's going to say, okay, this is the puzzle, this is the feel, yeah. this is it. And it's interesting because when we put you on a veil or those of you on the East Coast who might be watching a First Refusal, we, we'll put three or four people on a veil, the first choice and maybe three backups. And we don't tell you who's the first choice and who's the backup um, because many, many times they do not pick the first choice. So we want you to take your avails as very seriously, as seriously if you're the third choice, second backup <laughs> or the first choice. So you just never know. Yep. It's luck of the draw. It really is. Wow, this is really helpful information, especially when you are getting to that point of bringing and going in there and getting put on a veil. You should feel really happy about that Very. and be consistent and not yeah. try and second guess what they want because then that's not being reflective of what you were bringing. Oh, yeah. When you second guess what they want, then your head is out of your body. Your head's in the room. You're not doing your work. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's really interesting for me to give you this information as to why. Yeah. <laughs> why didn't I get it? It's the biggest question for so many actors. Why? What was it? Yeah. Um, and important to get back on the horse and not go into the next audition thinking why, why, why. Just Absolutely. Know. Wow. Okay, so to reiterate the five, number one. Um, the look. This is at the callback stage. Yes. Not, we're not even talking about <clears throat> why you get called in. You're right. already called in, you had your callback, and it's at the selection stage, actually. 
Yeah. So you're on a veil at this point. You're on a veil. Mm -hmm. The look, um, the feel of who you are, which is your essence, the relationship with the other people in the spot, um, and um, they could change direction, and then draw the lock. Awesome, Terry. Once again, you've given us so much insight and we really appreciate your wisdom. And I, I will go more into it in this blog that um, we'll be posting on Facebook later on in December. Um, it's for my um, blog writing for The Networker. Fantastic. And thanks so much again for your time and insights, Terry. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. See you soon.